Hi, my name is Sara Maluik, wearing the beautiful soft. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Diana Dovi podcast. Today, I'm immensely honored to have Sarah Brajovic for a conversation over breakfast at Sublime Hotel de Crillon in Paris. A bustling life and career around the globe as a model, pianist, actress, mother, writer, and with her new album coming out in February, Sarah embodies the epitome of effortless elegance, the essence of the Diana Dorville woman, and, quite frankly, a Swiss knife of life. I hope you will enjoy this episode as much as I did interviewing her. Bonne écoute. Can you briefly walk us through your story? Yes, I sound like a dinosaur. I've been around <laughs> a long time. I was working in fashion a lot. I did a couple of movies. I wouldn't call myself an actress, but you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was an interesting time. I am actually a pianist, uh, classically trained. Music is very important for me in my life. It's been a journey and it's still continuing and uh, changing. It's important to when you uh, have a calling and you really want to do something different, a different profession, you should just go for it. Three words when you think of Diana Dorville. <laughs> chic. <laughs> chic. Timeless. Comfortable. Very, I like that. I like when the clothes are comfortable and the material is soft. Uh, I'm a fan. I really am a fan. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. So, it's fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. That's a really good promotion. <laughs> How do you stay on top of your game? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm human, after all, like everyone. I have good days and bad days. And, you know, taking every day as it comes is important. In my beauty routine, I have to say, I sleep a lot. I can fall asleep anywhere. So as you know, we're a sustainable luxury brand. Since I'm in this fashion, <laughs> what is your relationship to sustainability? Does it influence your choices? There's a lot more uh, talk about sustainability now. And uh, I think it was something that I was always doing in my life. I wasn't really a big shopper when it comes to clothes. I was always kind of inheriting clothes from my mother and I had pieces and I would uh, not buy so much. I kind of had pieces that would Timeless, but yeah, timeless. Yeah, you can see timeless yeah. and, and super um, good quality. That well, a very good quality, so they would last forever. And uh, it was, it wasn't really a conscious decision. It was kind of just like how I liked my things. And my style is, I think, a little bit um, based on 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 that. And. Um, I think that in fashion, that's how I always was functioning, and I think it's a great thing. And when it comes to furniture, I've always also been collecting and buying sort of like vintage furniture from the 60s, from the 70s, and the 80s. So I'm not a big sort of consumer of things. So I think it was just my lifestyle. And now that people are talking about it more, I think it kind of fits in with my um, philosophy about you know consumerism and, and buying. We don't need to just constantly buying things. So. Um, Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good that people are becoming more aware about it, and even younger generations, and it's, it's, it's a positive thing. Hello, what did you dream of as a little girl, and what would you tell her today? Ha! Well, I was a, I was a big idealist when I was young. C'était le monde des bisounours, you know, everything was... Um, I would tell her it's not like that! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would tell her just to, you know, stay authentic and to be like, like I was, I guess, but just to have a little less expectation of, um, of an ideal world because that's, that's not the, the real world. Elle a l'esprit plus charming qui débarque euh, sur son cheval blanc en place de la Concorde, quoi. <rire> I was Et les gens for... qui sont moins méchants. <rire> I was waiting for him on the balcon de, euh, de, à Monaco. Habillé en petite princesse oh. tous les jours. Oh, <laughs> Any typical day in the life of Sarah Brandon? Oh, uh, I really try not to have a typical day. I try to make every different every day different. I don't like routine at all. So I do sleep a lot. That's the one thing that happens every on night. On a regular on basis. On a regular <laughs> basis. I need my good sleep and then You know, so sort of take it as it is. Of course, if things are planned, that's fantastic. But I like to kind of just keep it a little bit more true. Like, mm. uh, you host a dinner. Who do you invite? What's Ooh. on the menu? And what do you wear? Oh, wow. So, I would invite Yves Saint Laurent, Lauren Bacall. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to just like look at her and listen to her because she seems so fascinating. Ava Gardner. Frank Sinatra, I'm oh my very, very eclectic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I wear? 
I would wear, well, if, if, if Saint Laurent gave me something to wear, I would wear him, but otherwise <laughs> I would wear this. <laughs> what would I make? Uh, you know, I would just make a pasta. You know, I cook, I cook, but I'm not the, the best chef in Spain, but I know how to make a good pasta. So I would make, uh, I don't know, tagliatelle con funghi or something like that, and petite entrée, and uh, some dessert, ice cream, very simple. I think the accent would be on conversation, yeah. <laughs> not on the food. Yeah, so that would be a very interesting dinner, and that would go on for hours. I would be very curious about that. Your safe haven or dream destination? Oh, um, something cozy. I'm a cozy kind of person. I like the mountain, I feel really safe. Uh, somewhere, you know, like a little hut or cozy with a fire. Yeah, something sort of like pr protected, like a cocoon. Um, I, uh, for some strange reason, I really like small bedrooms. Like he feels like you're in the mother's womb or something. Uh, book, film and music. And there's so many. Music, I have a favorite album actually. It's Johan Johansson, um, Orfe. It's a beautiful, beautiful album. It's classical music. Um, it's, it's a modern composer who unfortunately passed away uh, in Berlin. He's an Icelandic composer and he wrote a lot for uh, movies. Um, book, my favorite book ever is L'Etranger de Camus. Uh, I don't know why. It's, it's, a, it's, it's always been a favorite and uh, it still is. So if you haven't read it, read it. Uh, film, La Bonne Année. It's, uh, with Lino Ventura, it's a beautiful uh, love story, actually, uh, in, the, in the south of France. It's a beautiful film, it's magic, it's one of my favorite films. Thank you, Sarah. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening. You can find more about Sarah's current projects at taranis.net and her official Instagram that I'm literally obsessed with, where she features a very eclectic curation of her coup de coeur. And of course, you can find all our sustainable luxury treasures and latest projects at dianadorville.com. A bientôt!